good morning evening or afternoon where whenever you're watching this video um i hope you guys are doing well i miss you guys and i hope you come back soon um what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about linear perspective and linear perspective is um what we use when we are talking about how things look um, in relation to our own eyes, okay? So linear perspective is spelled like this. Perspe um, well, actually, let's start with linear. Linear comes from the word, if I take out AR, I have what word? Line, right? And perspective, if you have a perspective about something, it's how you see things, okay? So when you're saying, see it from my perspective, you're asking someone to see it how you see it, right? So if we put that together, we have line and the way we see it, okay? Lines and the way we see them, linear perspective, okay? So we are talking about how lines look when we are moving back in space. So when things are moving back in space, that's another way to say away from us, so far away. So if I'm standing right here at the end of this road right here, then the road is going to look really wide to me. And if I'm looking down the road, the road is actually gonna look like it comes together at a point, which is called the vanishing point. But we, um, we, don't, we don't think about that um, in art a lot. So we're gonna be talking about how to make our art look a lot more three-dimensional and a lot more realistic to our eyes, okay? This is an example from someone in fourth grade. And this is an example of someone in also fourth grade. So fourth grade's doing awesome with these. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how we did it. Um, you need a regular piece of paper. If you have plain like white paper with no lines on it, um, that would be better. But if you only have paper with lines on it, that's okay too. We did these on a square because it's a little bit easier to understand. Um, so if you have a piece of paper, then try to make it into a square. And the way that you do that is you, if you just have your regular paper, so say this is my regular paper, right? I'm gonna take the back of it, and all I'm doing is folding my piece of paper a little bit to the back. So I have this little flap right here, and now my paper is a square. It doesn't have to be a perfect square. Just if, if you can, get it as close to a square as you um, possibly can because it's a little bit easier that way. So what we're gonna do, this is my sketch. This is what I showed them um, in uh, the, when I say them, I mean the in-person learners. So um, this was my sketch and this is what some of the other students turned it into. Okay, so what we're gonna be talking about is the way lines look when they move back in space. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold your paper in half. And remember, if you have a square, it doesn't matter which way you fold it in half because squares are even on all sides, okay? If you don't have a square and you don't know how to fold it into a, a square, then that's fine. Just fold your paper in half, um, okay? So cut your paper in half. Now, I want you to try as best as you can to put a dot in the very center of your paper, okay? Another way you can do that is fold it the other way so that you end up with four squares and then where those lines meet, you can put a dot, okay? Now, this line right here is called our vanishing point and to vanish means to disappear, okay? So this is where all of the things that we can see disappear into our drawing. So I can no longer see any more road. I can no longer see any more cactus right because it's all disappeared it's all come to that point all right so right here his uh telephone pole or her telephone poles um go farther and farther remember things as they move farther away from us they look smaller so right here you can tell the pole is about this tall and then it gets shorter 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 once it reaches that vanishing point our eyes physically can't see anything past that okay so on this one they used cactus getting smaller 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 and then once they got to that vanishing point all that stuff disappeared okay so what you're going to do is now that you have your paper folded in half and you have your vanishing point you're going to make a line all the way across 
And that line is our horizon line. So we, we use that word a lot. We say that word a lot, but some of us forget what it means. The horizon line is where the ground meets the sky. Okay, so if I have ground like grass, and then I have a sky like a sun, and down here is my grass, then this line right here separates the grass right here, or grass, from the sky right here, okay? So that's our horizon line, this line that we just drew all the way across the middle. Now, what you're gonna do is, if you have a ruler and you want to make it straight, you can, but we're gonna make the road. And when we make the road, remember, it's wide at the bottom and narrow at the top. So all we're gonna do is take our ruler or our pencil, put it on the vanishing point, and I'm gonna make a line, a diagonal line, and another diagonal line. So now my road meets at my vanishing point. Now, when we add these lines right here to make our um, the middle of the road, you'll notice they're long at the beginning because things are big when they're close and small when they're far away. So if I wanna add those lines that go down the middle, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a long line and make sure it's in the middle underneath your vanishing point. Don't make your lines over here. Okay, I'm gonna start at the bottom, long line, and I'm just gonna get shorter and shorter until they kind of look like dots. Okay, so they kind of look like that, all right? Now, I have my horizon line, here's my sky, here's my road, and then here is the grass along, or whatever kind of land alongside the road right here, okay? Now, I drew cactus, big, medium, and small, because they're getting smaller as they go back, right? So this person drew cactus on the side of the road, they were big, and then they got smaller, 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 smaller. Now, what I want you to do is, when you're drawing things alongside your road, your brain is gonna wanna tell you to draw them sideways, like that, like this person did. But when you draw things alongside of the road, cactus actually don't grow leaning backwards, right? They grow straight up. So when you draw your cactus or whatever you want on the side of the road, it's actually gonna be straight up and down, not diagonal like this, okay? So I drew a cactus. Remember, it's, it's big close to you, so this first one is gonna be big. When I draw a cactus, I just draw a big, tall U, like that, okay? Then I add one arm, I add a curved line and go up, okay? And a lot of times, cactus aren't even, like they have one arm that's lower and one arm that's higher. So then I can take this line a little higher, make my arm, and then make the top like that okay again um, I did a big U I made one arm taller like that curved line up so there's one arm curved line up there's another arm and then I connect it you can also if that's a lot for you um, and that's confusing that's fine you can also draw, oops, you can also draw an upside down U like this and then come back like that and like that. So big upside down U and then draw your arms. That way you don't have to do all this maze. If that doesn't make sense to you, you can do it this way. So either one of those will make sense. Again, the second one I did a big upside down U. Then I drew my curves line for my arm and my other curves line for my arm, like that, okay? So you can do either one of those. Now, I drew my big cactus. Now I'm going back in space, so I need to draw smaller and smaller as I go back. Now, if you get to this point and you think, well, I don't know how to draw that if it's gonna run into this, then you can do what's called overlapping, okay? Um, when you overlap, Let's say you want your other, you want another one over here, like another cactus over here, okay? Or, um, yeah, let's try that. So you can do your big, tall, um, the upside down U, right? And then you can add your arms like that. But you just don't make your line 
means a bottom. You just don't make your line through this cactus because if this cactus is behind, you're not gonna be able to see through this cactus, right? Because cactus aren't see-through. So if this one's standing in front like that, then a little piece of that cactus is gonna be missing. So now I can go back, take out the horizon line because I can't see through my cactus. So I know I'm not gonna be able to see that line. So I take that out. Now I can move on. Okay, so if you want one overlapping, that's how you do it. Now I'm gonna move back a little bit in space, draw my medium cactus. Like that. And then I'm getting closer to the vanishing point, so I'm gonna get smaller, smaller, smaller. Okay, so I do my cactus shape, my arm, and my arm. And again, I don't want that line going through my cactus, so I'm gonna take that out. All right, now, I've got my cactus on one side. I just need to add my cactus on the other side. For the sake of time, I'm not gonna add that in the video. I'm just, go ahead and repeat those shapes on this side, okay? Now, in the horizon line in the background, I have mountains, and my mountains are overlapping each other as well, so one's on top of the other. What I did was I just drew a regular triangle first, up, down, okay? If you want your mountains to overlap, then you just move your pencil up on the mountain and start there instead of starting a new one down here, okay? So then this next one will be taller. And I don't want it to go through my cactus because I can't see through my cactus. I'm not gonna be able to see the mountain behind it. Then I'm gonna put my pencil there. Maybe I want a shorter one. And then the last one, maybe I want a tall one like that. Okay, so now my mountains overlap. I've got a little bit of overlapping here with my cactus. Okay, if you want to add those pokey things on cactus, what did we, I think we said that they were called splinters when we looked at it last time. Okay, so you can add those little pokey things. Sometimes cactus have flowers on the top. You can add that, okay. Then when you are done, you're welcome to add a sun. I did a little sun behind my mountains. You're welcome to add a sun. You're welcome to add anything you want. This person colored theirs um, blue in the background. This person colored theirs more like a sunset and tried to blend those colors. So whatever type of day you want it to be, go ahead and color that in the background. Go ahead and add your mountains and your cactus. I did not really add snow because I knew that I had cactus growing and maybe you guys have seen it, but I never have. I've never seen snow at the same time that cactus were growing. I don't know, maybe it happens, but I'm not sure. So I didn't add snow. I just did my mountains and then um, moved ahead with my um, cactus shape, okay? So make sure that you have this line correct. Make sure that you have these lines correct and make sure that your cactus is big at the front and then small in the back. If you need help or if you have questions, just send me a message and I will get back to you. And I hope you guys have fun. When you are ready to color, make sure you watch the video that I posted about craftsmanship so that if you're coloring with colored pencil or marker or crayon, you're doing it correctly, okay? All right, have fun, guys.